Oh, Photography 101. Today is all about planning. Yeah. So planning is very, very important for photographer or in fact for any content creators. Uh, I'm gonna give you three reasons why it's, it's such a critical thing to do. Reason number one, time. Whether you're a professional or amateur or just a traveler, time is very, very important and critical, especially for photographers, uh, simply because you, know, you really don't want to waste time when you get to uh, a location. Uh, if you're a professional, especially, uh, you know, you don't want your client to wait around, get frustrated, and you don't like, it seems that you're not professional enough by like kind of experimenting angles and things like that. Yeah, you can do a certain amount of it, but you don't want to waste too much time doing so. Um, otherwise, you know, you just don't come across as uh, efficient or professional, you know, um, uh, in front of a client. Um, even at weddings, you know, by knowing the place, uh, doing a lot of research will give you a massive advantage when it comes to shooting because uh, you, uh, it's a heads up, you know, as a head start when it comes to the place and then uh, uh, and you can just start uh, basically looking at the weather and things that just adapt to the environment a lot quicker than if you don't have any sort of research. Um, then if you're traveler for instance and it's also better as well because uh, you you go to a place and uh, what you don't want is to take photograph like everybody else so what you need to do is uh, look up on the internet you know and uh, thank god we have internet these days and then uh, you can just see what other people have done to the place you can still take a couple of those shots if they are one of those kind of uh, landmark shots and yeah take some souvenir shot but if you want to have some really really good images try to do things that not many people have done so uh, you may want to try a different angle and things like that when you get there and uh, so it's give you a little bit of an idea what it looks like and because of the internet these days like I mentioned and uh, it's actually very easy to find uh, information about uh, what's going on there, uh, what it's going to look like, different seasons and the uh, different conditions and uh, you, you, you're very likely to find images and also blog which write about the entire area. Uh, uh, so it's easy to do that. Um, so don't be lazy, just get onto the internet and start digging. Okay, right. Second point, cost. Well, you may wonder why cost, uh, uh, you know, affects planning or planning affects cost um, well you just have to think about it you know let's say if you're just starting out in photography um, you really don't know what you want so planning does help you in terms of getting the gears you want and also within the budget that you have um, so it's very very important to understand that for instance if you are primarily going traveling and things like that you really don't need a lot of stuff and then uh, one camera one or two lenses is more than enough or even a very very good bridge camera or, or, or advanced uh, compact point-and-shoot cameras are more than enough um, but if you are very like enthusiastic about certain things and then you may want to start digging and a little bit deeper in terms of uh, whether those features will uh, complete your requirements basically like let's say if you want to uh, uh, photograph your daughters or your sons playing uh, sports and things like that so you do need something a lot faster a little bit more professional to enable you to do just that and uh, not just about quality but sometimes getting uh, just getting that shot you do need something fast in terms of AF and things like, or tracking so um, uh, so that that's that's sort of planning I'm talking about and um, even as a professional and um, very very similarly you know like uh, when you're first starting out let's say you just got a pot of money you want to start a business Business, and uh, you really need to uh, uh, have that budget in mind you know if I primarily just want to do portrait work then why would you need like 10 different lenses or like five different bodies and things like that? you don't need you only need just a couple of bodies one one main body and one spare body and then just a couple of portrait lenses um, so yeah it's, it's very very essential to just plan planning will save you a lot of money oh okay reason number three weight well, you might think what the heck you know is planning to do with weight or what's the importance of weight well that depending on what sort of photographer you are if you are like myself a location photographer who photograph portraits at different sort of cities and places countries 
then planning is very essential. So is landscape photographers and also travel photographers because you really do not need to overkill yourself by taking absolutely the entire collection in your cabinet. Um, I used to do that when I becoming a professional, you know, and uh, uh, well, there are two things to it. You know, if you don't know what you want, remember planning like reason number one um, uh, it can be confusing and then you might want to just thinking about oh what about just in case I need that lens for that particular thing or this and that you know no you should actually think about taking photo of what you have and not what you don't have and uh, so that is important uh, but anyway so you you find it like myself like this morning I've done a photo, uh, photo shoot in the yeah Tower Bridge area and uh, because since I know this area very well already, like so I can kind of forget about planning, but um, uh, I just take what I really need for this particular shoot. So I only have three lenses all in my bag. Uh, so I don't have to uh, uh, carry too much and weight myself down and get super tired by the time I finish the photo shoot. I still want to have energy uh, at the end of it. Or even when you're traveling, you know, you really don't want to tie yourself out half day through, and then you're basically starting to dislike the journey. And uh, remember, photography is about fun and uh, especially when you're traveling you know you, you really really don't want to think too seriously or think too much about photography even though if you want to get the great shot uh, same as landscape photographers you know like uh, you often see landscape photographers going out with one or two lenses and a tripod some filters and things like that that's all they need you know they don't want to carry too much because they'll be hiking hours and hours and hours just like through the mountains up and down the streams and things like that uh, even like walking around cities is tiring as a photographer you know you may not notice it but when you are working uh, you are kneeling down all the time getting up and down walking through the stairs is actually quite tiring so that's why planning is very essential for weight saving um, also not to confuse what you want to do so let me give you an idea what i have in my bag so yeah. There you go. This is basically my work bag these days. Not my Billingham, not my usual Billingham, uh, because I kind of fall in love with this bag recently. And uh, this is the Gissel Century backpack. And uh, yeah, you might actually see that in the last couple of months of our videos. And uh, yeah, I've been carrying this around because I, I just think this is actually pretty cool, especially uh, these are summer days now. So I do tend to carry my laptops and things like that so I can work at location. So this will allow me to do that while the Billingham doesn't. And also it's a shoulder bag, so it can be a little bit heavy, especially when I'm carrying everything. I mean, gimbals, laptops, camera and lenses so it'd be too much but anyway this is good um, so I want to show you what I have in this backpack so uh, this backpack does give you a few storage options which is actually quite cool so first of all I have the camera that I'm filming on right now which is the E1X and I'm filming with the 12 uh, millimeters f2 prime and uh, that lens that I'm using to film myself at the moment is not my photography lens although I do use it sometimes but they're not my primary lenses what I tend to use is this this is the 17 millimeters 1.2 so yeah you can see that I can have a flap open here so more more like a sling bag I can just open it with one shoulder on and then just turn it to the other side you can see what I have as well and uh, so I have the 25 millimeter 1.2 if I want to get a little bit tighter for a head and shoulder shot or even half body is quite nice for that and then I have my trusty yeah 40 to 150 f 2.8 pro this is really really cool this is my kind of trinity in a way and uh, I even shoot the entire wedding with these three lenses and uh, I, I do have other lenses but these are kind of tend to my go-to because I already know the characteristics I already know the focal length and uh, it's really easy for me to visualize or conceptualize a photo session so this is actually very very important that's what I do so you can see that this bag does hold up quite a lot even it doesn't really look it it's only quite small by comparison and also very smart with this kind of carbon fiber looking leather so it's actually pretty good and also does have this middle zip here I can actually open up and slung my uh, uh, tripod on there as well which is actually pretty good so it can hold everything and the top section also uh, as a, like a private section here where I can basically uh, put my uh, power bank my business card uh, rain cover memory card and also I'll put my vlog stuff as well like mic kit and then a lavalier uh, memory card uh, I think I said memory card already <laughs> and uh, I sometimes will have my gimbal my uh, Weibo lap gimbal will be slot in here and my wallet and everything so nice and secure so yeah this thing does actually hold a lot of stuff but like I said 
this is all I have for this particular photo session this morning. In fact, this is kind of my general uh, photo session that I, uh, that I do and this stuff, stuff that I carry. Uh, so three lenses, one body, and that's all I need. Uh, so it's not too heavy, especially with Michael Forza, it's actually super light and I can do everything, like absolutely everything. So um, I'm super happy with the entire setup here and uh, I'm carrying this backpack, which is actually pretty cool, very lightweight and uh, I'm going to put the link down below so you can see all these lenses that I use and also the backpack as well and uh, yeah I, I do like it if you fancy something like this it's kind of smart looking thing and uh, yeah worth considering if you want me to do a review on this I can do just leave me some comment down below and then I will, we can make a specific video just for this uh, so I can show you everything about it <laughs> anyway so this is all about it but there are something I have to tell you I know this video is all about planning but there is one one single element that cannot be planned and that is a great outdoor weather and uh, whether you are in a city or in the outdoor and the mountains things like that this is the thing that you cannot foresee no matter what sort of sophisticated weather forecasting system that you have these days is still not as accurate you know and uh, so this is something you simply cannot plan and uh, you just have to improvise when you get there or having plan b and plan c uh, when you're doing your desktop studies and uh, that would help uh, but still not guarantee so anyway i'm going to talk about uh, i'm going to talk about the improvisions in a future episode but for now it's all about planning so if you're serious about photography don't forget that um hope you guys enjoyed the video and don't forget to yeah subscribe uh, by clicking the button there and also stay notified by enabling the bell button so you know when our new video is coming out until next time though i'll see you soon then bye for now carry with me through my life hope these scars can heal with time mm -hmm.